So I'm not sure why things work like this guys, but big banks overall, they suck. And most people actually understand this today. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you five lies that big banks actually tell you that cost you a ton of money. So if I watch this video, you're gonna save a bunch of money. And I'm also gonna tell you exactly what banks I actually use. Now overall, here's one question that's always rattling my mind, okay? Why did you pick the bank that you actually have right now? And for me personally, my first bank was actually Chase. And the reason I picked it was they had a branch right next to my house. And I also knew because everyone told me, hey, Chase is a big bank. That means they're a good bank, okay? And I always thought that it was actually a good idea. So when I went inside, I got my first bank account. Then I got a credit card offer and this and that. Before you know it, two years later, I'm like in $13,000 in credit card debt. I have very little savings and my savings are earning absolutely trash, okay? So not really the ideal way to pick a bank. Say it's big, must be good, not the right concept, okay? So in this video, we're gonna break everything down. As always, guys, like this video on top of Also, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified. And by the way, if you're new here, my name is Tommy Bryson. Now, the very first line that big banks tell you is basically, hey, because we are a big bank, we're safe and we have the best deals out there. The truth is that safety when it comes to a bank is not based on size. And here's why. 1930s, we have the Great Depression. Don't worry, it's not history. But what happened then is we had a big economic problem. And during that time, about 9,000 banks went actually bankrupt. Yeah. And they lost about $7 billion in asset. Meaning, it's like I wake up today, I go to my local branch and I'm like, hey, I want to take money out and they tell me, hey, no, we actually went bankrupt. Well, where's my money? And you're like, and they're like, hey, yeah, we don't have it anymore. I'm sorry. Okay. That's what happened back then. So a lot of people assume that basically, well, big banks have more money. That means it's actually safer. But overall, it doesn't matter. What actually matters is that Roosevelt signed an act, which basically gave us FDIC insurance, which basically stands for, it basically means that your deposits are secured up to $250,000 by the federal government. So it doesn't matter if you put your money into a little bank or a big bank or an online bank. Overall, the same safety feel still applies, which basically goes down to we have FDIC insurance and that gives us a positive, kind of like the insurance on our deposit up to 250K. And by the way, it's like saying most people, by the way, don't have that much money. So it's not a big deal, okay? But if you go to a bank, and they have FDIC insurance. By the way, most of them are actually regulated to actually have that. Overall, you go to one bank, you get 250 in there. If it actually folds, then you go to another one and you get another 250 in there. My point is, size does not matter in this case. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, number two, guys. Second lie is low interest rates on savings are actually normal. You know, I thought that when I used to compare things. Okay, I used to be like, okay, so I have Chase. There's Bank of America. There's also Wells Fargo, and they're all competing with these rates, and the rates actually suck. So I thought that, well, it's the normal stuff, okay? Everyone just has these savings just like this. In reality, it's not normal. And here's why they actually say this is how things actually work, okay? By the way, banks make money by grabbing your money and lending it out. So if they can actually lend money at 10% and pay you 1% or nothing, that works out better for their margins and their business and for them to actually make more money. So it's in the interest of banks not to pay you high rates because that way they get to actually keep more money in their pocket. Now on top of that, banks have what we call high overhead costs. That means the cost to do business is pretty high because they have a lot of local branches like the big banks do, those big three do. On top of that, they have a lot of employees, a lot of offers, a lot of promotions, a lot of first time customer deals, all this stuff, all this stuff costs them money. It's what it actually costs them to do business. So because of all these reasons, it's hey, we're just gonna offer you low interest rates, but we do have great offers in this bank or whatever, but that's not your problem. The way they operate is not your problem because overall we live in a capitalist society, so there are other options out there. And online banks, for example, when they first came out, everyone thought, hey, those banks are not safe. How do I take my money out of an ACM? There's no big deal. It's not safe because it's online. There's no local branch. Who do I talk to? 
customer service on the phone. Now, because they operate this way, they have no local branches, not a lot of crazy employees. The answer is they can actually afford to give you more money as far as a savings yield. How does this benefit them? Meaning, hey, if you're being offered more money for your money, you're bound to make more deposits, they're bound to lend more money out, thus everyone is making money, okay? That's why I usually always go with online banks when it comes to try to earn high savings rates. Now, the third lie they tell you is, hey, fees are normal. It's just how banks actually operate. It's how things work. If you look at those three big banks, they all have overdraft fees. They all have all of these complimentary fees that they just want to give to you. Now, by the way, I always say this to my parents or my mom, for example. She says, hey, I love my bank, Tommy. They're great. They're loyal. They take care of me. And I always ask, like, okay, so if you kind of mess up, don't they charge you a fee? Yeah, then where's the loyalty in that, okay? And you might say, Tommy, well, that's just a consequence of doing something wrong. You get charged a fee. And by the way, during the 2020 pandemic, banks, each of them made about a billion dollars each, those big three banks, in overdraft fees during the time where people were the most vulnerable. Does that sound like loyalty? Does that sound like trying to be helpful to people? The answer is, it just sounds like business to me. So overall, if it's just business and there's no loyalty involved in banking, right? And it's just the way they operate, my job as a customer, and your job as a customer, by the way, also, is to go out there and find the banks that don't have all those fees. By the way, most people do not know this okay but there are banks out there mostly online banks that don't even charge you an ATM fee internationally so right now I'm in Dominican Republic if I want to use my debit card anywhere there's no fees okay if I want to take out money wherever I want to take out money any ATM and I get charged a fee that fee is reversed back into my account and my bank covers it the answer is guys if my account gets overdraft there's no fee for that either okay there are no fees so whenever you're looking for a bank you want something that has absolutely zero fees and on top of that has a decent interest rate. you might say tommy it sounds like you want everything to be perfect that's not realistic the answer is remember nothing on this planet is free business is really business so in reality the reason there are no fees the reason you get a better interest rate is because, hey, they make money via you depositing your money. That is where their interest lies. Meaning, hey, if Tommy goes ahead and deposits $10, that's $10 for me to go ahead and basically lend out and make more money. So when I'm not being charged fees, they're still making money. But big banks try to make money from everything because they're big, they're massive, and this is how they operate. But that's not your business. You want to find the best deal for yourself, okay? That's the idea. Now, here's the fourth line they always try to tell you. They're always trying to upsell you on other products. For example, hey, we offer refinancing, we offer a credit card, we have this deal, you sign up, you actually get some points. If you actually get this credit card right here, we waive the fee the first year, we actually give you 18 months, no interest, no APR, but if you do this and that, then you kind of get charged interest. It's like a whole convoluted thing, but overall, at the end of the day, these are banks trying to upsell you on something else. And here's what I will say about this, okay? Okay. You always want to compare deals. If you actually need something like a refinance and you need a credit card, you want to compare overall who has the best option out there. Me personally, I don't like credit cards because I don't want to have debt overall. And the way I maintain my credit or whatever, which by the way is an eight, what, what is it? Like a, like 811 or whatever. The answer is I do it doing, for example, the one bill method. That means, hey, I have, I have two credit cards or three credit cards. I put one bill on each of them. I get them paid in full every month automatically. So that means I have Netflix and Audible and, and maybe like Amazon and each credit card and it gets charged in full every month, gets paid in full every month. And that way I maintain my credit. I increase my credit. But I'm not actually going into debt. That's the way I operate. I don't chase points because overall you're not going to get rich by trying to chase points and trying to earn flights because overall it's just you have to spend a lot of money. And usually psychologically people tend to spend more money when they're using credit. And that's the game I just don't want to play. But my point is, big banks are always trying to upsell you on something. So make sure whatever you actually are going to get, make sure something you actually need and compare options. When I was actually opening up, for example, my business account, which you might do someday, um, the best place for me to actually open up that account 
was with a big bank because big banks offer the best deals. Online banks did not offer good deals on that. My point is, it's not like big banks are overall bad and like online banks are the best, but it's that you always want to compare. Have no loyalty towards either online banks or big banks. Compare, 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 like my grandma says. Now, number five, guys, is it's better to have everything in one place. Now, this is another thing that big banks do, okay? They try to have you consolidate all your accounts. They want you to be, for example, be a depositor. That means you deposit your money with them. On top of that, they want you to borrow money with them, whether that's your mortgage or credit card, whatever it is. They also want you maybe to invest money with them, would be an investment account that actually offer, your car loans with them. All these things are with them. Overall, you never want to do that. It's like going to a mechanic to also get your haircut, to actually get, for example, your meals plan, your grocery list. It doesn't make any sense, right? That's my point. You always want to go to a specialist. Big banks are great when it comes to offering, for example, great mortgage rates, when it comes to offering great refinance or great business accounts. You know, they're good for those things. But when it comes to an investment account, you wanna go with an investment account. When it comes to if you want a credit card, you wanna go with the best offer out there at the moment. Again, I don't like credit cards. Keep that in mind, I'm just using it as an example. But that's my overall point. You always want to shop around to see exactly what's actually best. Don't believe these five lies that, hey, you need to consolidate everything in one place. Have everything in one place, okay? We're actually good to build credit. We actually the fees are actually normal here that's fine low interest rates not a big deal you know get a cd with us you know again what you really want to be is like one of those old people shoppers you know i don't know about you guys okay but my parents have always been the same if she goes and for example sees like a purse somewhere she will shop around in five stores to find out who has the best price but for us we have the internet, okay? So we can just type on the internet who has the best savings accounts rates and we actually basically get that. And here's one warning I will give you guys, okay? Do not become an interest rate like um shopper, okay? So just find an account that offers no fees like crazy, okay? So for me personally, the bank I use to spend money is basically SoFi Bank. That's the bank I use. It's actually an online bank. It is FDIC insured up to a million dollars. And by the way, it's because they basically have four banks within one, and then that's how they basically get it done, which is fine. But who has a million dollars in cash just kind of like have lying around in an account, okay? So that's what I use, SoFi Bank, zero fees. And even if I use my, my, my card, my debit card internationally, for example, to take money out, no problem. But if SoFi doesn't offer that when you watch this video, shop around for that, okay? Type in debit cards that don't have any ATM fees or have, for example, um, reversal up to three times or six times. That's perfect, okay? Now for my savings, I use, for example, Discover Savings, okay? I used to use SoFi, but I no longer use them because they don't have the best rates. Again, I'm not loyal to any bank. So now Discover is giving me, for example, a competitive rate. That's what I want, a competitive rate. I'm not looking for the newest bank that has, for example, a 0.5% difference because you can always keep switching around your money to earn just a few extra pennies and that doesn't make any sense. So for the most part, I'm gonna use Discover for savings and then SoFi Bank for spending money. I do have Chase. I do have BOA, I do have virtually like every bank out there, but that's a part of my job, okay? So don't do that, it's not necessary at all. And I don't get charge fees from them either, but overall it's just what I do, but my focus, my overall daily is SoFi Bank and Discover for my savings, okay? That is it for this video, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, hit the button notified, and comment down below, bank, so I know you made it all the way to the end of the video. And as always guys, um, peace, long term team, out.